so welcome everyone um, to my channel we will today start um, with part two of our hands-on tutorial series for xflr5 we will start uh, today the 3d wing analysis tutorial before we start with the tutorial let's talk some of the basic terminologies used for the wing design so for the 3d wing analysis um, i have chosen a rectangular wing so it will be a constant chord wing you're seeing this uh, rectangle filled with a blue area that is the plan form wing plan form or a top view of the wing and uh, this dotted line is the center line so this will be your wing uh, wing root cord and that will be the wing tip cord for a rectangular wing it, as it is a constant cord so there is no difference so the cord at the root and tip will be the same and this total distance is uh, span wise it's called wing span it's denoted by s the wing area is denoted by a and the flow is coming from top to bottom so means top side top edge is the leading edge and this here is the trailing edge we will be taking into account the only the effect of aspect ratio and how it will affect the lift coefficient so aspect ratio is defined as um, the ratio of wing span square to the wing area and in case of a rectangular wing or a constant chord wing it can also be uh, written as ratio of span to the wing chord we will be varying four different aspect ratios so we start with aspect ratio of four and then move on to six eight and finally ten and then we will see the effect of the aspect ratio as you can see here in this picture uh, the one with low aspect ratio wing it has a um, larger wing tip vortex which in result with uh, results uh, in a higher induced drag coefficient and higher downwash on the other hand the one with a larger or a higher aspect ratio results in higher lift and lower induced drag coefficient as can be seen with the size of the vortex also and results in a uh, weaker downwash compared to the one with low aspect ratio so now now let's start uh, with the wing analysis tutorial as in case in, in part one uh, it's the similar procedure you go to the file wing and plane design and then you move on to the plane define a new plane so you have to select a plane and define a wing and based on your wing you have to choose proper uh, airfoil or profiles and we will define the analysis as in case of sx foil direct analysis we have done so for the effect of wing aspect ratio on the lift uh, i've chosen a profile naka 0012 we've already done uh, the 2d airfoil analysis uh, i just assumed um, altitude of 1000 so here it is mentioned 2000 it's a mistake but yeah we can correct it quickly so 1000 temperature is 8.5 degrees speed is 70 meters per second and a density of 1.138 kilogram per meter cubic we have these are the parameter for dynamic viscosity as a it's a rectangular wing with a constant chord so the, the root chord and the tip chord i've chosen is one meter and normally you also in case of wings you one also use a mean aerodynamic chord that is you will take an average of both of these and divide it by two but in our case it will be the same value so and the wing span we will just uh, vary as i mentioned we will be starting with a aspect ratio of four uh, and then uh, we will change that uh, later on so this is the reynolds number uh, which i have calculated uh, based on the den density times velocity times the mean aerodynamic chord and divided by the dynamic viscosity right and then you will get the reynolds number we have to make sure that uh, we have um, a polar analysis available in 2d for this reynolds number at the root and at the tip because this is a very important step in case of um, uh, non-rectangular wings for example if, if it's a trapezoid or um, a tapered wing or a swept wing we have different chord lengths so this means that each chord length uh, represents a different Reynolds number 
and one has to make sure in the 2d f all analysis that he has complete this, this complete set of reynolds number along the span so that there will be no problem when we will be running our 3d uh, wing analysis right so okay let's start now uh, with the wing analysis uh, so as mentioned, uh, we will start uh, with the Naka 0012 airfoil and before we directly jump into the wing analysis, we need to make sure that we have uh, the, the lift polar or the drag polar uh, for the desired Reynolds number, which is here 4.63 million. So let's go to XFLR. We will start once again uh, with the direct foil design. So it will be kind of a revision uh, for you guys uh, as we done in, in part one. So we will choose Naka 0012. And as I mentioned, as a thumb rule or a crude thumb rule, I always use with approximately 150 points for the analysis. Okay, so we are happy with it. We have defined the airfoil. We'll move on to the X-foil direct analysis and uh, you know once you have chosen your airfoil you just simply go to the define analysis and your desired reynolds number which will be 4.63 million in our case and now we will simply do the polar so let's start with the analysis and uh, hopefully this will let's i would say let's choose minus 10 degrees to 230 degrees something like this and we will see how it works <clears throat> so it will be finished quite soon so we have defined it till 30 degrees so okay all right So it is now done. We can see that the polar is uh, complete polar and this is kind of a maximum CL it's achieving. And then it comes down to a kind of a trailing edge stall. Fine, so now we will move on to our wing analysis. First of all, the first step is you define a new plane. Either you go to the menu and plus plane and define a new plane or you could choose directly a shortcut key of F3. Um, we are just considering or uh, doing the analysis for a wing so we are not interesting any elevator or fin so you just go there and just define your wing that will be your main wing uh, if you want you could give um, a name proper name which you wanted to use or i would say in our case we can simply say rectangular wing with an aspect ratio of four so you start with ratio of four. So you have um, y equals to zero is the root uh, chord. So that is highlighted also in the display and the, in, the, in the window here, which is with red. And we have a chord length of one meter. You see here, and similarly, as we move on to the tip of the wing, we also use the same chord. So it's a constant chord, and we are not interesting any kind of sweep or offset all we will simply set everything to zero you see that it's looking almost uh, uh, it's looking really uh, flat because we have not chosen any uh, airfoil till now so once you choose an airfoil then uh, it will look uh, like a proper proper wing so we have said we will be choosing um, an aspect ratio of four six eight and ten let's say we start uh, for example with six an aspect ratio of six means that we because we are just modeling a symmetry so right side of your wing so then we have to take half of that distance so once you click three uh, xflr xflr is automatically calculating so you can see in this information window uh, where you have you see all the parameters so wingspan area we have an aspect ratio of six and taper ratio of once that means that we have a taper ratio of uh, uh, taper ratio of one means that uh, it's a constant chord so we have no no sweep 
uh, and uh, if once we are happy with the with the panels uh, we can simply move on uh, but i would say uh, let's let's take take about approximately 20 panels in the streamwise direction which is an x axis and take about 30 or so in the span wise even though it does not really affect because it's really a con uh, constant chord it's a straight uh, area it's a straight uh, wing but uh, we just uh, do or stick to the common practice so i think that's it from this point here and then you simply close it and once you're happy with the parameters uh, you give the name okay this is something again very important because later on we need to distinguish between the wings with different aspect ratios so it's a good idea if we define the name of the wing now properly so rectangular wing aspect ratio of six uh, and i think uh, we have used the same name as for here okay here we have four but we actually stick with six so let's save this once you're happy and then we use the same approach as in uh, 2d uh, x foil direct analysis models so you just simply go to the analysis and define an analysis we will be happy with the type one there are even different types available yeah, for the cd wing analysis uh, you say you could even do analysis and fixed lift fixed angle of attack or beta range uh, but we will be for this tutorial we will be just sticking with type one fixed speed so as we mentioned we will we will be using 70 meters per second uh, we have already shown here so the 70 meters per second is this velocity we will be using at this specific altitude okay and we will stick with the default which is normally the llt so lifting line theory and reference dimensions and error data so these are the values which uh, which is calculated based on altitude and temperature so i've already mentioned 8.5 degrees celsius at 1000 so once you click there you will get your density and kinematic viscosity so you can even see the units it's not dynamic it's the kinematic viscosity and once you are happy uh, with your parameter settings just save it and now we will just start uh, with the polar so we started with about minus 10 to to 30 degrees uh let's see if we can get our complete polar uh for about minus 5 degree to 20 degree range alpha okay so it is giving us now an error uh, that means uh, 4.61741 so this uh, there is a slight variation maybe in our calculations that means we need to make sure that we will do this uh, Reynolds number in our 2D analysis so that we should not have any problem for our wing analysis. So that is a very, very important step. That was the step which I was mentioning earlier on. So it could be slight variation based on our viscosity or density which we use and then you end up results in, in, in different uh, Reynolds number. But it's very easy. You go back to the actual direct analysis, do the analysis um, for the desired Reynolds number which uh, 3D wing analysis mode is complaining about. There, is, there was an error that it is out of the flight envelope this means that the, the the reynolds number it is calculating based on the parameter setting which we provided uh, this reynolds number is not available so we just start with this reynolds number we'll do a complete polar of this reynolds number and hopefully uh, the problem will be resolved later on when we'll go back again to the wing analysis mode so let's wait now uh, just uh, this as the, the polar finishes and then we will again go to the wing mode and see um, if we can use this set of Reynolds number which was missing in our polar you see it's it's really easy it's a very uh, self-explanatory all this stuff and it's a good practice uh, to master your skills even in XFLR and if you have proper understanding of what is actually going on uh, one can actually easily do that and uh, I would say let's go there and we will start again with the analysis and hopefully it has done so 
you see the problem has been rectified very easily um, it has given in the iteration window that this is the error and that's why we are getting this problem so this problem is now already this is solved so you could see um, this is really uh, the first graph is uh, cl over cd and this here is uh, c uh, cl to cd is the lift to drag ratio this is another parameter which we will be see, we'll, we will see uh, later on so um, i would say this is for one aspect ratio i will do for the other aspect ratio calculations analysis and then i will show you uh, the complete results the effect of aspect ratio on lift coefficient so if you wanted to do yourself uh, you could simply um, even save your image file if you want to present in presentation so you simply go there and you could simply use whatever name what to give and save it as png file or other formats like jpeg and if you want to explore uh, export uh, polar you could also do that so if you say just right click on the desired graph go to the current graph and say export the graph and you can export it as a csv file comma separated value and then you could import it into excel sheet spreadsheets or any other program which uh, can manipulate with this data files and uh, similarly we could also um, uh, do the calculations uh, further analysis uh, let's say if we go to 8.5 and uh, we change to the local lift coefficient to see how the lift is looking like so this is the complete span so it goes from 0 to 3 and we have a total span of 6 meters right and this is the lift distribution it's almost elliptic not really perfect elliptic but it's a perfect lift, uh, lift distribution and we can also by double clicking on the graph we can also change and the desired parameter if this is the one we use see that induced drag coefficient so we will also see the effect of aspect ratio on lift and also induced drag how it uh, decreases by increasing the uh, aspect ratio uh, so um, i would say we will just stop there and i will show you the results uh, which i have um, achieved okay so now let's move on uh, to this part i could even make this a little bit bigger so i think now it's looking quite good so we can see that we have done calculations for wing expect ratio of six a wing expect ratio of eight four and ten and by increasing the expect ratio uh, the lift is increasing so it's a plot again once again cl versus alpha you could see we start from four six eight and ten and uh, the lift is increasing uh, uh, lift is increasing uh, with, with considerable amount of delta uh, so, and it can be observed very um, easily at higher angle of attacks uh, with uh, with a specific increment so the increase of aspect ratio increases the lift but uh, on the other side uh, you could also see that the angle of attack uh, at uh, maximum cl is uh, is decreasing okay which is which is i think okay and another parameter which i mentioned also in the calculations in order to see the performance of your aircraft of, of or, or your sailplane or whatever you are doing for low speed reynolds number this is a very important factor so this means that by increasing the aspect ratio once again starting with this pink color uh, aspect ratio of four and going on till to the blue color which is an aspect ratio of 10 uh, the cl over cd so lift to drag ratio it increases which means um, that it is uh, uh, helping to to reduce the induced drag and we will see that uh, very shortly now so again i have just chosen an angle of attack of 10 degrees for example here at 10 degrees we'll be doing a comparison of a lift distribution span wise and induced drag along the span so once again the four aspect ratios are taken into account at angle of attack of 10 degrees and we see as we increase the aspect ratio the local list distribution along the span is increasing uh, overall we can see and um, this is uh, this is another factor that uh, should one should take into account that um, higher aspect ratio results in higher lift but also um, on the other side uh, the weight of the wing can also be uh, the structure problem can be uh, another issue 
these are uh, kind of the disadvantages so there is always a compromise you need to find uh, because you can't really have uh, really really huge um, wing structures spanning like really uh, at long distances so um, we said that if you increase uh, the aspect ratio you will be having a smaller induced drag and this is the formula for the induced drag coefficient so square of your lift coefficient divided by pi it's a mathematical pi multiplied by aspect ratio and the efficiency ratio which is an ideal efficiency ratio is like one uh, so but we can see that the induced drag is um, considerably decreasing with the increase of aspect ratio so which is again a confirmation that xflr is producing um, almost reproducing this uh, these results which is uh, like available from from theory so um, i think with this i will uh, come to the end of uh, uh, my video and now i would like to know if you guys um, like this video or if you have any comments uh, about my video so feel free to write in the comment section and uh, stay tuned also for the for the next part which will be part three i'll be talking about the high lift system or high lift devices how we can do a simple xflr5 analysis of the high lift devices or high lift system used in the wings like flaps and slats so uh take care and now i just conclude uh, my video session thank you bye bye so that's it from now don't forget to like the video and subscribe my channel stay tuned for new incoming videos thank you